So today, my friend Spencer and I are gonna cut off a lot of this hair. Uh, Spencer's been growing his hair for a while, and here in Atlanta, Georgia, it's going to be, I believe tomorrow is supposed to be 101 degrees with over 100% humidity, so his hair is just not really cooperating. But he doesn't wanna have short hair. He does want to have something that is much uh, thinner on the sides, much less uh, overabundance of hair, but he does not want his hair to be just uh, classic cropped off hair. He wants to have it a little bit of length through the top. So what we're gonna end up doing is, as you can see, I've done a slightly triangular horseshoe section right around, just, um, just beneath the parietal ridge in the front, just above, above the parietal ridge, kind of in the corner of the head, and then just beneath the crown on the top. And the way I'm gonna start this haircut off is I'm gonna start off at the front hairline. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna cut this underneath quite short. We're not buzzing it off. I'm not gonna use any clippers today. I may use some edgers or some trimmers to really strengthen up the outline, get it clean around the ears, but I'm leaving this scissor length. Um, generally speaking for me, I work both in the hair salon as well as a barber shop. And when I'm in, a, in the salon or barber shop, I don't use clippers on anything longer than what would be a two guard. Because I feel like after a two guard, I have better control with either scissor over comb or actually using my fingers. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start off. Now Spencer had mentioned to me that he likes to have the illusion of a sideburn. He doesn't have like a real strong sideburn that grows in. So we're gonna leave some hair right here at the bottom of the front hairline. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt him away. We're going to comb this hair forward, just slightly forward, almost into what would be natural fall. You can see he's worn his hair forward for quite a while, so he's used to having this kind of C shaping. We're gonna cut a C shaping in his hair so that we maintain that length at the sideburn. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting up against gravity, just using the tips of my shears, and coming back down with gravity. and then combing back and creating a bit of a sideburn. So as I comb this back, let that hair lay, pull the ear back, and cutting up right up to the top of the ear. Now, once it's dry, we'll refine this, but he has the appearance of a little bit of a sideburn. One thing I like to do is I like to look at men's cheekbones when I'm doing a sideburn. Either I want the sideburn at the top of the cheekbone, right in the middle of the cheekbone, or underneath the cheekbone. Because he's got such a strong cheekbone, I'd like to keep it just at the bottom of the cheekbone to keep him looking really chiseled. You know, uh, Spencer and I were just talking about his new workout routine, so I want to make sure that he looks as chiseled in the face as he does, you know, throughout his massive physique. So what we're doing now is I'm taking slightly diagonal back sections, pulling this to about fingers width, just slightly longer at the top. So this is gonna be slightly graduated. And when I say slightly, I mean ever so slightly. This is almost square, but we're cutting just slight diagonal. And then I'm gonna continue with diagonal back sections, combing up into the next section. I'm not combing into my previous because I don't want to gain any length. I have enough length for my finger angle and the roundness of the head. You know, once the head diminishes off at the parietal ridge, you gain length naturally if you create a square shape. I'm actually going past square, somewhere in like the 80 degree range, and that's going to gain just a little bit more length at the top. And you can see because Spencer does have so much hair, by keeping that little bit of graduation, it keeps it from jumping out. If you cut it completely square, a lot of times it will push straight out of the head. Almost, uh, I think of almost like a dandelion, the way that the a dandelion will just grow straight out in every direction. His hair is so strong, it can do the same. So I'm now continuing to work, pulling straight out from the head, not pulling into my previous. sure I don't take his ear off and I'm cutting almost all of this with scissors um, I personally like to use very small scissors um, that way I can work around the ear I don't have to worry about you know nicking him at all and so right now 
If you guys want, please feel free to tune in, chime in, ask any questions you have about what I'm doing. Um, I'm, it's fairly self-explanatory right now. What I've been doing so far is I've just been cutting with the head shape with a slight graduation. Started at the front hairline and working towards the center back. And as I put in my shape, I will continue to clean up my outline as I work around. So now that I've worked past the ear, I'm gonna go back through, do a quick cross check, see if there's anything that I missed before I move on to the back. Basically, once you get past the ear, you usually have about one section. And after that first section, we're gonna end up working all the way through into the nape. So now that diagonal back goes a much longer section. Now you can't control all of that with your hand at once. So I try to do my best to make sure I section everything away really nice and clean. I'm starting at the top, combing in, lifting up, pulling back. You can see my guide clearly. Cut to my second knuckle, re-section. And now what's gonna end up happening is at this second knuckle, all of a sudden we hit the mastoid bone. Mastoid bone is where the side and back of the head meet. It's also where the head starts to dip down. The side of the head is fairly square, it's very flat. Once you hit that mastoid bone, it dips in. So what you're gonna see me do is I'm gonna shift my fingers down. I'm gonna shift them down a little bit of an angle. You can see I'm, I'm still fairly vertical, but as I get lower, I become a little less vertical and a little more horizontal so that I can follow the head shape. Now, just gonna comb that down and clean up these little frays, these little stray hairs. One thing I'm big about with men's hairlines is I like to keep the corner here. A lot of people round off a lot. I like to keep a little bit of a corner. It looks more masculine from behind. It uh, makes your, your shoulders, your neck, makes everything just look a little bit stronger rather than if you were to just round it off, it tends to make you look a little bit rounder. Back. Still trying to stay very tight. What you'll see is you have to continue to work around because the head rounds off. If you stay stationary, you're gonna end up gaining length. You're gonna end up pulling into it and you're gaining more and more length. You're naturally gonna gain more length because of the way that the head rounds off and because of our pre-sectioning. But what I wanna do is I wanna keep that as tight as possible. You can see also Spencer has this light coloring of hair. If you don't do a good job of cutting it, you show every imperfection. So that's why I'm taking fairly small sections, doing my best to really kind of be very meticulous with my work. Have we gotten any questions going on over there, Andrew? Not yet. Not yet? All mm -hmm. right. Well, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, it's fairly self-explanatory right now. Uh, once we move through the top, we will show you a little bit more of something that's a little more um, interesting with the disconnection and with uh, basically we we're gonna cut that top three different ways. And then coming in even tighter. I'm excited that uh, I get to actually do this hairbrain myself. You know, a lot of these hairbrains, I'm the one hosting and not getting a chance to cut. I was really excited uh, when Spencer saw him in the salon. We worked together on Thursdays at our Sandy Springs location. And I was really excited to 
see him and I was like, man, you want to be a model for a haircut? Your hair has grown so much. And he was like, yes, I'm ready to cut it off. So I said, that's great, man. You can totally be a model for me. So right here, you can see this is a little bit longer than this here. It's because of the roundness of the head and the way that I have that pre-sectioned. I want to keep some length there because I also don't want his cowlick to shoot straight up in the crown. Um, he's got a lot of texture in his hair. Um, his crown, like a lot of us men, is a little bit finer or thinner than the rest of his head, or at least down through here. So that hair is going to have a tendency to jump or react to a, a growth pattern much more than heavier hair would be. I don't want him to be rocking the, you know, like rooster tail through the top. So now I'm going to cross check, it should be fairly clean, just taking off a little bit and it should follow the head shape. Just a little bit of weight right here, just above the mastoid bone. And also if you want in cross checking, you can also always go through with scissor over comb. I'm a huge proponent for scissor over comb. I think scissor over comb is where you can really see somebody who has not only barbering skills, but also hair cutting skills and vice versa. Somebody knows how to actually shade hair properly with scissor over comb. I mean, it's a beautiful technique to watch. I don't know when it was, but it had to have been about 20 years ago. I got to watch Tim Hartley just cut almost an entire collection of both men and women and he was doing so much scissor over comb work that I was just enthralled. I was just totally mesmerized with the talent that he had at scissor over combing. You got a question? Yeah. When you get towards the nape, you switch up how you're holding your shears. Can you explain how you're holding them, please? Yeah, sure. So it's pretty simple. What I've been doing is this. Once I get into the nape, um, I really want to make sure that I can get as tight as possible and I don't want to arc my wrists. If I stay palm to palm, I have to really tweak my wrists quite a bit. Um, and truth be told, I've been doing this for like 25 years and I'm trying to just keep my wrists from hurting. So what I tend to do is I, I flip my shears. I still hold them very tight with these two knuckles. And then the, I use the outside instead of the inside of my thumb and I just move back and forth. These shears are actually designed to do that quite well, the way that the thumb ring is. You can see it just pushes up, so you can actually set the on the outside of your thumb and move and just open one blade very cleanly. Uh, it, for me, it makes it just a little bit easier, a little bit smoother, and less, uh, less pain on my wrist. And you can see now, my wrist is completely straight even though I'm getting quite tight into the nape. Hope that answered everybody's question. Um, really, you can do that with all lengths of shears. Uh, I definitely still always love using my small five and a half inch, or five inch shears. I really very rarely cut with anything hot longer than a five and a half. Um, I've just, I've just gotten to be extremely accustomed to using five inch shears. And I also don't love shears that are real thick. A lot of people like a thicker blade. I find that I don't like a thicker blade because what ends up happening is most thicker blade shears are designed for uh, more dry cutting because it, the thicker the blade, the smaller of an angle you have, or I'm sorry, the, the wider of an angle, more convex of an angle you have on the blade. This is stays right there at about a 34 degrees, so it's gonna be as clean as a razor. So I find for me, a smaller shear with a small blade seems to cut the cleanest for me. And that, again, that's my own preference. I know some amazing hairdressers who use six and seven inch, inch shears. I myself, I, uh, I like the small shears. I find like I'm just able to control them better. It probably is one of those things, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this statement before, but it's so true in hairdressing, it's true in pretty much in life. You don't necessarily know what you like, you like what you know. 
And when I was first going through training, I was taught to cut hair with very small four and a half to five and a quarter inch shears, nothing longer. And I've just been more comfortable with that ever since. Now you can see his hairline grows down quite a bit and has a little bit of uh, movement to it. I'm going to take care of that later when it's dry, but I am going to just kind of knock out a little bit of this extra length right now. But I'm going to come back through and clean that up once it's dry. I'll do a bit of scissor over combing. I'll probably even do a little bit of scissor over combing with my other favorite tool, which is a, a pair of uh, some texturizing shears that I have that are blunt bladed. A blunt blade texturizing shear really does an amazing job with slicing through hair as well as scissor over combing through hair. And for outlines, if you, I personally love to have a really nice structured outline, but I also like it to look soft so that it grows in well. Spencer, I'm going to tilt you just a little bit. I'm tilting him away just a touch because I went just past center. This is going to be my last section before I move to the opposite side. So now, again, I'm very tight. Back to the question about my shears. See, I'm, I'm at an actual diagonal line now. So instead of racking my wrist up and cutting, I flip my shears, put my thumb in. Very easy. Just, it just is a less, it's less wear and tear on my body, which at this point in my life, I have to be a little more cautious of. As you guys can see, we've cut a little bit of hair here and uh, we're not even halfway done. But Spencer now is starting to look like Jekyll and Hyde if you were to look in the mirror at him. So once again, combing the hair at the front hairline. Just like on the opposite side, I comb this forward Tilt him up. Uh, somebody asked, why not carry the same guide all the way around to the other side? You can, you can. It, for me, I have a tendency to end up with a lot of weight on this side behind the back ear if I work all the way around. You can work all the way around. I find that this is easier this way because if you think about it, my fingertips were going up because I was moving to my left. Now, if I continue with those up, I'm going to gain extra length right here. Whereas if I come back through with my fingertips down in the opposite manner, I'm going to take off that extra weight just behind the ear. That's why I do it. Can it be done the other way? Absolutely. Is it wrong to do it the other way? Absolutely not. Is it my preference? No. And to be Honest with you, one thing that I have found with hair, there are multiple ways to achieve the same looks, and it's all about what's most comfortable for you. I personally try my best to cut hair the way that I will have the least amount of mistakes. Um, I am not a naturally talented hairdresser. Uh, when I started doing hair, I was very, very young, and I was very, very bad at it and it took me years of practice to be, get very good at cutting hair. Now, the reason I am good at cutting hair is because I practice so hard, but I also practice very hard at being as precise as possible as, and giving myself the least amount of room for error. I make it as easy as possible for me. Does that mean that this is the only way you can cut this? Absolutely not. This is just the, the best and most efficient way for me to cut this. Um, I have quite a few friends, especially in the barbering community, that would immediately would have went at this with a very long clipper. Um, they would have probably grabbed out like a six and just worked down to a three. Uh, personally, that just doesn't work as well for me. I know a lot of people that would have cut this by setting in their the top graduation line first and then working down from there. That would be perfectly fine as well, just not for me. This is just the most efficient way for me to cut this one, this particular shape. Um, but there's nothing wrong if you want to work all the way around with it. I just have a tendency to add too much weight behind my opposite ear, or my, in this case, it would be Spencer's left ear. Combing this down. So I grabbed a hair from 
the front. So now, clean this. Again, just being very careful right around his ear. That's why I use the small shears. Blanca said, the beginning of this haircut reminds me of the butterfly from Vidal Sassoon. Firefly. But yes, you're correct. Because it is, it is diagonal back um, round graduation. The difference is with a firefly, a firefly sectioning is based off of a 45 degree angle. So if you think about the head, if this would be 90 degrees off the side of the head, the sectioning for a firefly would be right at 45 degrees. You cut it first with one finger of elevation, two fingers of elevation, three fingers of elevation through the side, and that's what you work through into the nape. Our sectioning was much higher. If this was 45 degrees, we were up at, I don't know, 80 degrees, and I'm almost completely square just using the roundness of the head above the parietal ridge to create my graduation. But you are correct. The actual, the beginning sectioning, uh, everything definitely has a bit of a firefly-like feel. The overall <laughs> end result is going to be drastically different. Spencer is not gonna look like Dorothy Hamill whatsoever. So now, once again, you can see him at very high elevation. This area right here, with the person who asked the question about why don't you just work all the way around? If I was to work all the way around this area right where I'm working now is where I tend to have too much weight. By coming back in this opposite direction, I am able to be much closer and tighter with my work, which in turn makes the outline look more precise. This all together ends up being a lot easier for me. You can see there's all of these hairs here. I don't like to white wall people. You know what that is where it's, you see a bunch of skin around the ear. I don't ever find that as an attractive look. Some guys want it. If they want it, I'll give it to them, but I usually try to talk them out of that. So now, combing forward. And back to what I was talking about on the opposite side with the hairline. I personally like to keep the hairline a little more square in the back rather than rounded because it makes the person look a little more structured or the man look more structured than round. Again, some people don't want that. Some men want a rounded neckline. There is nothing wrong with that. But for me, I've, I'm all about trying to accent somebody, whether I'm talking about cutting a bob on a woman that's gonna accent her jawline, or I'm cutting a fade on a man so it's going to accent his neck and his uh, cheekbones. You know, I want to make sure it's, everything is, is, looks as fluid as possible. and looks like it makes sense. What do you charge for a men's haircut? I charge for a men's haircut, uh, depends, okay, so, Depends if it's just a haircut. If it's just a haircut, I charge $75 for the haircut. Um, if I am working in the barber shop and I do a beard trim with it, it, is, uh, it goes from 75 to 90. Uh, right now, pretty much everybody has a beard trim. Um, and then I also tend to do a lot of gray blending with my clients, which is basically a semi-permanent rinse uh, that takes 10 minutes and it adds a, uh, adds another $45 to it. So if you would actually look at my average ticket when I'm working in our barber shop, my average ticket in the barber shop is somewhere around $120 per client. Uh, now, when I'm working in our female salon, uh, I spend more time with them. I ha we have assistants, it's a different setup. In the women's salon, I charge um, $150 right now, but I'm going up uh, again in price. Uh, probably at the middle of next month. Uh, probably up to 170 or 175, we just haven't figured that out yet. Do you have a preference on brand of scissors? Absolutely, but I'm also a little partial. 
I absolutely love the Van Michael scissors. They're amazing and they're a ridiculously good price. Um, these are a VG10 and the VG10 means uh, in quality of steel, this is a 10 out of 10 and they sell for about $240, which is a great deal. Um, but yes, I absolutely love these. I also love them because I love this. Uh, this is a ball bearing versus a tension screw. So it runs a lot smoother. It's a, that's, this is definitely my favorite brand of shears by far. Um, there are other good ones out there. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, but I just feel like bang for your buck. You're not going to get anything better, um, for, for less money. This is really the way that, that you do it is through, uh, I do it through Van Michael. Uh, there's vanmichaelscissors.com is the, where I buy them from. Uh, you can see this pair, this is a pair that I use in the salon all the time and they are extremely sharp, even though I've had, I've been working with this, this exact pair for probably close to a year yet and haven't even had them sharpened. Generally speaking with scissors, if they're a good quality like this, you should easily get a thousand haircuts out of each pair before you need to have them sharpened. Once you've had them sharpened, you need to have them cut uh, about usually somewhere around five or 600 uh, cuts before you need to have them sharpened again. Keep working through. You can see I'm crossing over the stuff that I've already cut now. So I'm just making sure all of this blends in together, that there's no points. It's ironic now that I'm just thinking about this. The last time I did a harebrained live, I was uh, cutting on a mannequin um, just a few months ago uh, because we had an ice storm here in Atlanta the night before and I, my model was not able to make it in. And now it's gonna be 101 degrees here tomorrow. So <laughs> it's amazing how the how time flies and the, the weather changes when you're here. So now I'm just going through, doing a little bit of a cross check to make sure that everything blends from one side to the other. You can see I've got just a little bit of a point that I want to get rid of. I'm not squaring the back off, but I am rounding it off so that it's not, there's no point. And Spencer, I'm going to tilt your head down just a little bit, my friend. I'm gonna do just a little bit of scissor over combing to refine all of this. They're really liking your uh, your explanations. Oh, thank you. People are enjoying it. Well, you know, I tell everybody I'm a, I'm pretty good at explaining stuff because I'm really not very smart. I'm actually probably the dumbest person that's on this uh, harebrained live right now. So if I can explain it so that I can understand it, pretty much everybody can understand it. So Spencer's looking pretty smooth. We're not. Okay, coming through. So now, what I'm doing is I'm taking diagonal sections. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna keep this head 
this hair section off and I'm gonna create a guide on both sides. This is where the haircut becomes a little more interesting. This is where we end up doing a bit of disconnection with connection in the back. So what I've done is I've worked really hard at making sure everything was consistent in my, uh, my graduation line or the top of my graduation just beneath the parietal ridge. Now what I'm doing is I'm pulling this hair up and out and I'm following my guide, okay? So I'm rounding off with the head. I'm standing right in front of my work. But once I get right here to the, basically the mastoid bone, I'm going to follow my triangular section and gain length. So this is where it becomes disconnected. I just follow my own guide. I don't follow the guide from underneath. See how that blends through the sides, but it's disconnected on the top. Now, if I just did this consistently through both sides, he would end up with a really big point in the front, which is something that Spencer prefaced to me that he doesn't want because he's had that happen a lot in the past. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, here's my mastoid bone. Here's where I start following my diagonal section, which will gain just some length through the front. People are really liking how you're explaining how you can't hold your hands and scissors and the ergonomics of stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, the truth of the matter is, Going back to what I was saying before, I, I'm not a naturally talented hairdresser. I'm really not, a, never, I don't have an ounce of, of natural talent in my body. But because I've had really good instructors who've shown me how to cut things as easily as possible, it's allowed me to continue doing that. And I just always go back to the basics. Everything about haircutting is just basic geometry and basic physics. So now that I have this guide, what I'm gonna do is you're gonna see me cut this both on this side and on the opposite. See my guide pretty clean, rounds a little bit in the back, will become very straight and triangular through the side. When I say triangular, I mean longer towards the front. It's a, it's a triangle, so it goes from short to long. Uh, basically in shape of hair, you can have three shapes from the front to back. You can either have something that is square like this was in the on the sides it can be longer in the back and, sh and shorter in the front so it would be round like the head shape or it can be the opposite of the head shape which would mean triangular or concave uh, what are some key consultation questions to ask when cutting a first time guest a, a lot of questions so for myself there are four things that I like to do with every single consultation, especially a first time consultation, but really I give a full consultation for everybody. So the first thing that I want to talk about is when somebody, when somebody sits down in your chair, whether it's a man, woman, child, the first thing you usually do is actually touch their hair. So the first thing that you need to be concerned about is feeling their texture, seeing what their hair will or will not do. Uh, particularly here in Georgia, we have to be very concerned about humidity and texture of hair with humidity. Uh, the texture of hair doesn't mean you can only have one kind of haircut, but it does give you a kind of roadmap of things you don't want to do. Uh, with someone who's got really curly, frizzy hair, somebody who's got really a whole lot of gray hair, you might not want to go through with a razor with texturizing shears because you don't want to end up creating uh, too much texture that ends up frizzing. With somebody who's got really heavy hair, you might not want to cut it really blunt because it might just lay too heavy. So feeling the texture is the first thing. The second thing I do is I always look at people's uh, face shape, man, woman, child, once again, 
there are certain things that the face shape will allow you to do or allow you not to do. Now, real quickly, back to this haircut. If you look, he's got a point in the center. And the reason he does is because all the hair was pulled from one side and then it was pulled to the other, which has created weight through the front of the hairline and through at the top of the head. So you can see. So now what I'm doing is I'm gonna take a mohawk section. So this is gonna be a section right through the center of the head from the crown to the front hairline. So you can see this is like a, if I pull this up, it would be what a mohawk would, would be. Okay, so what I'm now doing is I'm taking this hair in the front and I'm gonna take a lot of this weight off. I'm sorry, the hair in the back, the hair in the crown as my guide right here. And I'm just slightly diagonal. Okay, working through to the front hairline. So it will be longer in the front than it will in the back, but just a little bit and it'll take all of this weight off of the top. Now everything's gonna be pulled up. Now this was cut and created a point through the center. Now if I pull everything up, it's going to run out and I'm gonna have just a little bit of a square effect through the top. Pulling everything into the center using some natural inversion. If this had not been cut on both sides, we would actually create a bit of a concave shape or something that goes from short to long because of the over direction. But because we've already cut the sides off, we're just kind of taking that corner through the middle off. So opposite side, bringing everything up into the center. You've got to use the fine teeth of your comb and really sharp scissors if you are going to cut everything in one section in a stationary guide. Stationary guide, you don't need to worry about the size of your sections. You can make them as large as you can handle, but you wanna make sure that you use the fine teeth of your comb and make sure that you're using sharp scissors in doing it. Someone wants to know your story, a little bit about yourself. Where do you come from? Where'd you go to school? So I myself come from uh, a little bit of everywhere, but when I was at the ripe age of about 13 years old. I started goofing off in my mom's salon in Cincinnati, Ohio, and started cutting hair. Uh, cutting my friends, my brothers, my cousins, just cutting anybody's hair who wanted to let me cut their hair. Uh, then when I was just out of, uh, I was about 18 years old, I decided to go to cosmetology school and do it for real. And I went to the Aveda Institute in Cincinnati. Uh, I was actually the one of two people that were the first ones to graduate from there. And I turned 19, I think, on Monday. On Tuesday, myself and a young lady named Beth went to state board and we both passed. Then on Friday, I moved to LA to do more training with Vidal Sassoon. Uh, I was out there for about a year, and then I got recruited by uh, a company called Van Michael Salons, and I have been with Van Michael ever since. So real quickly, back to this haircut, this front hairline. Spencer said it always ends up coming down to a point, and he doesn't really like that. So what I've done is I've just rounded that off. I may take more off, but I do know also that this hair is going to shrink up, so I'd like to let it dry first and then see if we need to take some more off or not. All right, so now you can see he can wear it forward and messy, or if he wants to have a little bit more of that kind of Top Gun Maverick look, he can slick everything back. I am gonna do a lot more refining once it's dry. I'm gonna wait for it to dry first. Uh, I'm gonna actually put a little bit of product in his hair. Um, this is an Aveda product called Grooming Cream, and I'm literally using like just a dollop, barely anything, maybe, a pea size amount. Rubbing it in my hands really good, using my fingers to work it through, then using the palms on the side, fingers and palm. Let me 
and you can see that's even looking great just slicked back also be able to let him wear it forward as well a lot of times i personally like to use a brush but in this case with his texture i might just use my fingers for all of it and do what i would call power drying where i'm just blow drying circularly Because he does have a little bit of texture, I'm getting it about 90% dry just with the power dry and using my fingers. And then I'm going to go through the best brush for just a second. I'm going to just wrap his sides from front to back. So yeah, so back to my story, uh, 23 years ago, I believe, close to 23 years ago, I started with Van Michael Salons, uh, and honestly, have been with them ever since. Um, Atlanta was originally, I thought I would be here for just a couple of years. Uh, I didn't think, I, I thought I wanted to move to New York, but really, I worked with some of the best hairdressers in the world. And I get to do so much with Van Michael, not only behind the chair, but on the road. Uh, I, I get a chance to do things like hair shows, photo shoots. I've had my chance to see the world a million times over. And it's really all because of Van Michael Salon. Um, so back to my story, I have a lot of interesting things that have happened along the way. And I've had an amazing experience, but truth be told, my uh, my story is that I pretty I came to Van Michael pretty early in my career, and I plan on staying at, with Van Michael through the rest of my career. Uh, and I have to say, it's definitely been such an amazing ride. So, if any of you people are out there right now or getting ready to uh, change careers, go into uh, working at a different location, salon, a different company, uh, if you're just getting out of cosmetology or barbering school. The one thing I can say is find a company that is really good at growing and maturing you and that's where you want to go because that's where you'll stay and that's where you're going to end up having your best career versus just having a job. And now, do you think you knew? said you're a fantastic instructor and thank you for the class. Oh, well thank you. Not completely over yet. Almost. All right, so now Spencer's dry. Now this is where you create the haircut for the person. It's not just a shape that you know, was a, a technique. This is where we actually customize it for someone. So I'm just looking at Spencer right now, pushing his hair around from side to side, looking at it. It's, it still looks a little full through here for me, and a little bit right through there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of different techniques to really take out some more weight. The first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to clean up his outline. Uh, so the way I'm gonna clean up his outline is I am gonna bust out some trimmers just to strengthen this up a little bit. I'm gonna comb his hair up over to one side. I'm gonna create a sideburn for him. Now, 
talking about the hairline, generally speaking, what I say with a hairline is think of a candy cane. Should fall down like a candy cane, not go around. Opposite side, I'm gonna do the same. Somebody earlier said stop knocking yourself. Anyone that can learn technically then explain it as well as you are. As a fine stylist, your price range reflects your ability and confidence. <laughs> well, thank you. One of my uh, very good friends is uh, a gentleman by the name of Oscar Bond. I actually just saw him at Premiere last uh, weekend down in Orlando. And when I was first starting off, he was one of my mentors. And I think back then I was a little bit more, a little more arrogant than I am now. And he told me one day, he goes, you know what? Confidence is great. You need to be confident in this industry. He says, but there's a lot more to said to being humble. And so ever since then, I've done my best to try to keep with some humility. And I will tell you guys this. I promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. If any, I believe that's a Robert Cromine's famous saying. Um, and he's a brilliant person to listen to. But it's totally true. I, if I can do this, you can do it. Um, because it just takes work. You know, a lot of people want to know, you know, what's the secret to this industry? In fact, uh, there was a young lady who came up to me in Orlando and said, you know, so if there's one thing that you could teach me, what is the, the best thing for this industry? And I said, the best thing for this industry is learning to work really hard, not only at your job, but also on yourself and making yourself better. So now here's what I'm doing now. I'd mentioned these are my, fa my second favorite tool. Watch this. I can't cut myself. This is a blunt blade. Don't do it on this side. Those can cut you. But this is a blunt blade, so it's ideal for scissor over combing and slicing so that the hairs and don't who catch. Who makes the scissor? Uh, it's Van Michael Scissors. Van Michael. Um, actually, these are for sale on Hairbrained um, if they still have them in supply. Uh, Hairbrained is the exclusive uh, distributor of this tool and uh, just on the in the Hairbrained store. They're, but they're amazing. You can see... I don't know if you guys can see on the camera or not, but right here, I've used those. Right here, I haven't. See, there's just the little indiscrepancies. It melts them together really well. I'll show you again right here. And you can see I'm going through, there's zero pull. When you scissor over comb with a, with a uh, blending shear, a, a texturizing shear that has a has both blades sharp uh, sometimes it can pull because you're moving so quickly these do not pull at all coming back on the opposite side and with his hair it just helps it melt together so well Do a little bit behind the ear on each side. And come back up just a little bit. Where do you draw inspiration for design and shapes? Oh man, everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. It's so funny. People ask you that all the time. Like, oh, where do you get your inspiration? Um, everywhere, any chance I get. Uh, I mean, obviously other hairdressers. You know, there are a handful of other hairdressers that I think are just absolutely amazing and talented. Um, I have a good friend of mine, Adam Federico, that I love to watch his work. Um, particularly in the men's world. There's a gentleman out of London, a gentleman named uh, Josh LaMonica. He's become a good friend of mine as well through the years. Uh, another gentleman that's on here all the time is Sid Satong. He is just absolutely amazing at 
um, cutting hair technically. He comes from a, a Sassoon background as well, in which he was very, very uh, structured in women's cutting and then got into barbering and doing wet shaving and all the things that really uh, our, our careers kind of have mimicked each other in that way, in some way, shape or form. He's a phenomenal uh, educator and hair cutter. A couple of friends of mine, um, uh, Mario and Ivana, uh, that they were with Zigat and now they've all went out and done their own education uh, team. They, they do some really strong work. But really more than anything, I, uh, I follow a lot of hairdressers on Instagram. Um, and you know, in, in the morning when I'm having my coffee before I get my workout in, I'm usually looking up either hairdressers or, uh, or somebody to give me some inspiration on to what to do in my workout that day. And that's really where I get a lot of my inspiration. Also, I mean, young pop culture, which for the longest time I was really anti, but now because I'm old and not as cool, I like to look at the young people like in the salons, young people in uh, restaurants or out at, at uh, in the shopping malls, wherever, just to see what their fashion is because their fashion really is dictates what's gonna be uh, current very shortly. So I'm pulling my disconnection up and I'm gonna do some deep pointing. That's gonna help let this corner collapse. Take another diagonal section, pull this up. Now, I'm doing this. Hey Spencer, your mom says hi. <laughs> awesome. Hopefully she likes his hair. She said that's my handsome son, so. Yes. And hopefully I'm making him even more handsome. Oh, that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> you know, I, I hope not though. I mean, Spencer works next to me one day a week and you know, I don't really like working next to him and Kenny because, you know, between the two of them, you know, they make me look like the old guy in the shop. So I should just mess up his hair so that, you know, makes me look better. So just a little weight there. So I took that off with some club cutting, going back through and doing some pointing. And your mother is right. Your hair looks very handsome. All right, buddy, I'm gonna push this forward into your face again. All right, at this point, I'm gonna do just a little bit to get this out of the eyes. I know he's not gonna wear it down this much, but I also don't want him to be a driving hazard of any sort. So I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna, with my blade closed, lift the hair, come through with the, the comb and just doing some little bits of pointing off the ends. Might be going in a quarter to half inch deep, back and forth and just brought the hair up a touch. And now I can see I need to slice just a little bit more right around the parietal ridge. I'm gonna do that using the, those blunt blades again. So once again, blunt blade, combing this hair down but just right here. And here's the big thing with slicing. You wanna make sure you slice in the direction of the hair. You do not wanna slice against the hair. You only wanna slice with the hair because if you're cutting with the hair, you can keep the cuticle, keep the cuticle closed. Whereas if you go against it, it breaks open the cuticle and the hair tends to frizz. So what I do is I open and close just a little bit, not all the way down, and just take out a little bit of weight. And see, I'm just working in the direction the hair falls. I'm not going against the hair at all. There's actually a guy that I follow, going back to inspiration. He's a barber out of, of uh, uh, Russia. And I have no idea what his name is because it's written in um, basically in a language that I don't speak and I don't know anything that he says. I just watch him do his demos and he's really big 
about doing this with bald fades kind of coming down and scissor over coming back up with the texturizing shears um, when you go from the skin to the to the hairline. So and see that just took away you know, that extra bulk. So at this point, I'm going to get all this extra hair off of Spencer with, with some air. And we're going to put a little bit of product in. Like I said, he can wear it back. So now, this is, uh, I asked him what he's using, he says at home he's using this. This is called grooming clay. This is from Aveda. It's a very matte finish. Uh, not a real strong hold, but it definitely has a bit of hold. Kind of a waxy like clay rubbing in my hands really good. To really show off some of that texture in his hair. Uh, someone said, blonde hair shows every cut, beautiful work. Oh, thank you. That is one thing I told him earlier. I was like, man, your hair is one of those that it's like, buddy, if you cut it right, you see everything looking beautiful. But if you don't do a good job, it shows every imperfection. Yeah, looks good. 